Hey everybody, I wanted to jump back on here really quick and I didn't know what to entitle this uh, video because it's a very sen sensitive subject. I want to share something with you really quick. Um, first of all, we know that Israel is in need of our prayers and our uh, support in any way, shape, form, uh, a form that we have to give. But I want to share with you something that is very important and we can take a lesson from it ourselves. You know, God had given me a word about children that are disobedient and uh, children that didn't want to heed the voice of the Lord. Even though God tells us to pray for Israel and Israel uh, was the original, uh, well, Israel is God's chosen people. Um, and God began to, uh, put his promises with them. And because they rejected him, um, God has given us that opportunity, which worked, uh, perfectly. I believe that is similar to when the Lord had, uh, one day told me to take my prayer shawl and my prayer shawl I had been having for about 15 years praying with that same prayer shawl. And my youngest, my oldest son had gotten in trouble. And the Lord told me to cut the prayer shawl and give uh, the cut piece to the oldest one. And the other part of the prayer shawl, which was the remaining portion of the prayer shawl with the cut piece in it now, it would belong to my youngest and I was like, first of all, I cried. I didn't want to cut my pressure. And then the Lord asked me, why are you crying? And I say, because this is precious to me and I don't want to cut my pressure. Uh, I know this is you telling me this, but I really didn't want to cut my pressure. And um, it means a lot to me. And the Holy Spirit told me, the father told me, I know exactly what you feeling because my son, Jesus was my very own and he was precious to me. And yet I gave him, um, to a people that wouldn't even appreciate. And in some cases may very well have rejected him. And so. It didn't make sense that God wanted me to give the cut piece to my, uh, the piece that I cut out of the pressure to my oldest son and to give the whole pressure with the cut out to my youngest son. And the Lord told me it, it, it was not really going to matter because, uh, the, they needed one another for it to be a whole. And it wasn't long after that my sons had to come together uh, and help one another. And I say that to say this, God knew that he was going to use Israel and then Israel was in turn going to bless us to be a part of the body of Christ because of their rejection. In other words, God made it to where as we need one another. Israel needs us, but we needed them. And that's what gave us that opportunity to be with uh, Jesus. Now, with all of that being said, I want you to know that I honor God and his selection of his chosen people that he made out of, out of a nation of, uh, they started with 70 people and he made it them a nation. I know that we are grafted into, uh, God and in Jesus because of, uh, the Israelites. I want you to understand something though, in this, and this is what the Holy spirit and that's the reason why I'm trying to tiptoe around this because I want, I don't want my words to be misconstrued. Uh, this is something that the Holy spirit is giving to me, but God is saying to us that it is very important that we understand the message of obedience 
as children. Israel is still God's children. And as a people, God has told us to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, which is uh, which is uh, the, the what well, they're, they're not in Christ right now, but pray for them. One of the things that we can pray so importantly for is that Israel turn back to God, because even with everything that is happening today, Israel is rejecting Jesus still to this day. Um, Israel in so many cases of where we are praying for them and covering them, but Israel is not innocent by a long stretch. Oh yes, they are God's chosen people. Yes. God loved them with an undying love, but who was Jesus talking to when he was arguing with the people, um, that was the seed of Abraham. That was the Jewish people. So they would have, they would have, if Jesus would be here today, be rejecting him. I want you to understand some things right about now. You cannot proselytize in Israel at all. You're talking about God's people. And I don't want to hear about the door, Jesus. Uh, you will um, be in prison up to two years if you proselytize um, the gospel or bring the name of Jesus to the wrong people. I just put a video, uh, if it's not on YouTube, I'm going to make it our uh, picture for this video. But Israel just lifted up a flag right along with the flag, their flag. And I want you to take a look at that. And I want you to understand that we're praying for Israel out of obedience to God. And we know that this is God's people. But we also have to know that Israel is in trouble because of their rebellion against God and the flag that they raised up before uh, that, that flag that they raised up um, right along with theirs is an indication of where Israel really is. You know, do, during 2020, when CV-19 was uh, out and about, who was who was going along with that agenda? You know, uh, if nobody was doing <laughs> what they uh, wanted them to do, Israel was. And so Israel's not only in trouble because of the war, that is uh, surrounded them, they only will have the protection of God because of our prayers and because of God's faithfulness to them. But let's make no mistake about it. Israel is a whoring. Israel is walking in defiance against God and rebellion as a nation. And so I think that so many of times when we say we love the Jewish people and pray for the uh, the Israelites, I think we believe that they are totally innocent. And that is totally not the case. Israel has been rebellious all the way uh, from back in the day, in the Bible day, even until now. And I'm here today to tell you that when a people will rebel against their own creator, God will let you know that the enemy is crouching at the door. And the only reason why they will not devour you is because I made a covenant with Abraham. If that don't tell you something about how we are to walk, many of us are not consumed to this day because of someone that walked with God and God made a covenant with them. The Bible says we, it's only because of his mercy that we are not consumed. I want you to know obedience to the almighty God is so very important because it's always an enemy that is waiting to attack us. 
And what did God allow uh, to happen to Israel on many occasions? He allowed their enemies to uh, apprehend them and do everything that they had already wanted to do. And make no mistake about it, there was nothing significant or even special about Israel as a people by themselves. God chose a people that was nothing special about it. He said it in his word. No one wanted you. I chose you. And so let that be an understanding of who we are before the Lord. If it wouldn't be for the Lord choosing us, who would have wanted us? And so how can we dare raise a flag that is meant for rebellion against God? How can we even think to disobey and dishonor God? This is a very important lesson. I don't know if I'm doing my very best at explaining it. Holy Spirit, uh, you say that you will take two fish and five loaves of bread and you will disperse it or you will make good. So I trust that your people are being able to ex understand the depth of what I'm trying to say. That Israel, the Israelites, God's people desperately need the power of God to change their hearts. The Bible says though Israel will be more than the sands of the sea, only a remnant is going to be saved. And he's only going to save them because of his faithfulness to Abraham to save a remnant. Who was that in the Bible, the prophet that said, I think it was Jeremiah. He said, don't cut off all of the people or there won't be a remnant left in Jerusalem. But God was willing to wipe them away because of a word starting with a D, ending with the E. God hates disobedience. So if he was willing to destroy 